Hey, what's going on? Welcome back to the Generation One Podcast. Today is a very, very, very special day because we're going to be talking about not the martial arts, mm. but the marital arts. Clarify. This is a podcast where you're going to hear things that you need to know before you get married. Or maybe you are married and you need some insight for the journey. Or maybe you want to be married and you're like, man, I don't even know what that looks like. I think I have it all together. I think I know what marriage is. But today, and they're going to say they're not experts, but I feel like we are sitting with two of our personal, one of, first of all, some of our favorite people on the planet, For sure. but also the hosts of the Marital Arts Podcast and our community pastor, uh, worship pastor. Just, there's just so many things, but you already know them. You, you're not, you're not going to be shocked. Or maybe you will be. <laughs> but we're sitting today with Pastor Ebenezer Quay and Pastor Tina Quay, Watkins Quay. And uh, we're Yo. excited. What's up, y'all? I feel like we're, like we're getting our swords together right now because this, this is really about to be a, a marital yeah. arts moment. Yeah. And I need my sword. I need my shield. Uh -huh. uh, and not so that we can fight each other, but so that we can fight against whatever comes up against us. And I feel like that's what the marital arts is all about. Yeah. Absolutely. Am I right? Absolutely. <laughs> fight for the marriage, not yeah. just in the marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you guys are like... First of all, I said it already, but the Marital Arts Podcast is one that you need to check out. And we're going to link it below, but we'll probably talk more about that as we continue. But I got a question for y'all that I feel like so many people want to know. And it's one that we don't think to ask. But can you guys talk about one misconception about marriage that needs to be debunked? <laughs> Just one? <laughs> Let's see where it goes. Let's see where it goes. This, this is, is a, a journey. journey. It's a journey. Ooh, I've got it. I've got it. I've got it. Go, 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 go. Yes, go. You, you complete me. Oh. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Babe, Big get one. that one right now. Big Handle one. that, please. Yeah. yeah. So please. this idea that marriage is going to fix things for you. Yeah. yeah. And that a person is going to supplement you to become a whole person. Yeah. <laughs> like That's whatever so you are by yourself, <clears throat> not only are you going to continue to be when you get married, it's going to get worse. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going to get bigger. Yeah. I'll say. Yeah. And so yeah. if you're lonely, if you got spending problems, if you don't like working out, <laughs> mm -hmm. if you're passive aggressive, if you have a hard time receiving gifts or love. Like, all those things just get bigger mm -hmm. in marriage. Sure. And uh, I love that scene from the movie because it seemed so epic. But a lot of people really believe it, and it's just not true. So, no. Mm. Yeah. 100% <laughs> yeah. right. Like, it, and not only does it get bigger, you, it is magnified because you see it. Yeah. Because when you're really by good. yourself, you can hide it. For you can sure. ignore it. You could pretend yeah. it's not there. Like, mm -hmm. oh, that's not me. I can my first my personal favorite. I can get to that later. Yeah. I'm growing. I'm developing. I just I got time. And then you get married, <laughs> and now you have a spouse. Yeah. And the time that you thought you have, you don't have that no, no. more because there's a life the two of you are called to live, and this thing that we allowed to just be who we quote unquote are is interfering with our development. Mm. Wow. Like we're supposed wow. to be a certain version of us at a certain space at a certain time with the life God has allotted to our covenant. Yeah. And when we're not, when we're out of step and we're out of alignment, that's when life gets unbearably hard yeah. in your marriage. For sure. Mm. And now I have to deal with this thing with years of added baggage mm -hmm. and I have to be more honest with myself than I'm used to even mm -hmm. being. Mm. In her eyes or for her in my eyes. Yeah. yeah. It is no, nah, not not you complete me. No, 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 <laughs> not no. By any that's, such no. A, that's such a great way. <laughs> no, no ma'am. Think no, about sir. it. <laughs> you said something that just jumped out at me. I can't get it out of my head, but you you basically said that marriage magnifies. Mm -hmm. Marriage will be maybe yes, a mirror. That's great. But also it's a magnifying glass mm -hmm. because you're gonna see whatever is actually there. And I would also argue that marriage isn't addition it's not just her being an addition to my life it's her multiplying my life mm -hmm. and that can either be multiplication in a bad way or multiplication in a good that way part. whatever's there and <laughs> yeah that whatever part. is there so it, it's kind of like when you have money you get more money it's just gonna show you more of how you see money yep. yeah. maybe your spending habits are like really terrible and just because you got more money you're gonna be even worse 
because whatever you didn't deal with prior to getting that money or prior to getting married mm -hmm. is just going to show up and be magnified mm -hmm. even greater when yeah. you have that that multiplication come into play. Yeah. Um, but can I can That's I go so there a little good. bit about like one of the things that a lot of people think it go for thinks it. it's going to solve? Yeah. And I've had so many conversations with my brothers. I, I'm going to speak from a man's perspective. But a lot of men, I can speak for myself, felt like if I get married, this is going to solve the lust problem. Mm -hmm. If I get mm -hmm. married, and I'm not going to, I'm not going <laughs> to, you know, be out here struggling or tripping. And, and that's not true. Mm -mm. Yeah. That's not true. Mm -mm. Because you think that getting married is going to solve a problem that you might have with lust or with, you know, if you have like a pornography addiction or something like that. And this is what we all talked about when we first sat down. I was mm -hmm. like, hey, um, we're, we're like further down the street and we're like past this. But also like because that was part of my history, it still has effects on me and we need to know how to navigate this. Yes. Um, and you guys gave us some really great tools and insight on that. But if you don't deal with anything that you currently struggle with before you get married, it's going to show up. Mm -hmm. So it's better to deal with it prior to getting married so that whenever you're with that person, it doesn't come knocking on your door and they're like, what is this? Yeah. And I mean, you're, you're not going to be perfect, right? Like you're yeah. not going to, the idea of becoming whole before you get married is not the idea of I have solved every single issue. And I think, Okay, so maybe that's another misconception yeah. is that you have to get to a level <laughs> to of perfection. Perfect. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, I think that it, it's really important to have had those some um, foundational tools and a level of freedom, I would say, and accountability before you want to enter into, you know, bringing that into your marriage. Yeah. So that's, I think that's kind of the difference. Because I think that, you know, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't solve the lust problem. You know, it doesn't solve the, you know, the, the temptation problem. You still got eyeballs. You know what I mean? So it, it's just important to make sure that you have brought it to God, brought it under submission to God. And just like any other sin, like it's, not, we're all going to be, you know, we're all going to sin and fall short, but your commitment to putting it to death and recognizing that no matter, you know, no matter how good you've been in the past, no one is exempt from sin. You know, like, you know, no matter, you know, you could come into marriage, you know, a virgin, you know, you have never looked at anybody in your life, but do not underestimate that we all have flesh. And so submitting to God every single day, you know, laying down whatever that desire is, you know, whether it's lust or whether it's, you know, alcohol, it could be anything, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you know, just making sure that you've gotten to a level where you are committed to laying it down and that you have accountability um, before you enter marriage, I would say that that's kind of like that. That's like the bare bones, right? That's kind of where you're like, you know, I got my legs, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. then and then you go from there. But you ain't gonna be perfect. Yeah. Did you guys have anything that <laughs> that for like an example of something that you felt like marriage was gonna solve that, quite frankly, it didn't? Again, it's everything. Because that's it's that's for whatever reason that's how marriage is taught. It's like find the person, mm -hmm. date them, mm -hmm. and whatever your problems are, when you get married, it'll instantly be solved. Yeah. If you're a spender, <laughs> you get married and it's gonna make you responsible. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's gonna make you a saver. If you are a saver and you don't know how to, you know, deal with God's resources in a generous way, just get married. Yeah. And you'll learn how to be generous. It's wild. Your wife will pray away your That's issues. Here you go. This your is it. Your husband's gonna your fight husband's on the demons. Break that You're thing off of you, you. Mm. and you ain't gonna do no work. Just your spouse breaking it off of you by Man. yourself. Right. Listen, marriage does not. There's not a single problem that marriage solves. What mm. marriage is is an arena mm. that the two of you are deciding to get into mm. to wrestle with your problems wow. together. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> you got my back. Brilliant. I got yours. Tag you got team. that thing in a chokehold. When brilliant. you get tired, I come over the top rope. Bow, <laughs> elbow. Hey. When I fall, <laughs> you put that thing oh. in a figure four. Like we're <laughs> fighting these things in an arena together. And that's why it's important while you're dating to understand who you're fighting with. Because yes. I'm not oh trying to get gosh, into the yes. arena with somebody who's not prepared to fight mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. or doesn't know how they battle. Yeah. Man, like the, so the worst time to figure out your fighting style is in the middle of a fight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You should know by then, this is how I handle being lonely. Because yes. guess what? If you're in a marriage where the two of you are walking in purpose, y'all not going to be 
all up on each other 24 7. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're in Costa Rica ministering, you're in Uzbekistan leading worship. Like, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Where is that? <laughs> what are you going to do when it's been two, three, four days, four, five, six days, a week, two weeks, mm -hmm. and this is what God has ordained for your marriage in that season? Mm. Just having the ring doesn't automatically mean my loneliness problem is solved. Mm. Because if I haven't gone to God with what my loneliness problem really is, exactly. the void that, it, that really is there that I haven't taken care of exactly now i'm quote unquote lonely my problem isn't solved and then what do we want to do blame marriage mm. Mm. So, many things. so when you're tired i love the arena i'm holding mm -hmm. on to that because it's <laughs> yeah. so <laughs> epic and accurate but the fight isn't this bloody fleshy fight the kind of flesh like the word says that we don't wrestle mm -hmm. against mm -hmm. and this mm. this idea of our flesh being and this even ties into what you were saying, um, Ty and Ren, that sin is a, a need being met illegitimately. Mm. Mm -hmm. And the flesh that we're bringing to Christ and submitting to him is our needs. It's our humanity. Yeah. It's the wow. fullness yeah. of that hurts. And that was whack. And that was unfair. So and that made me angry. And this makes me sad. And this makes me glad. All of the things. And being able to bring that to Christ in a way where we respond and where our soul doesn't get infected with it, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and our interactions with each other don't get infected with it, yeah. so that you don't end up with this arena is, how can I be a lowly sinning human being mm -hmm. who can bring my humanity to Christ and let him work through me so that our relationship is not just not abusive, it is glorifying him. Mm -hmm. yes. We can say, we can minister to each other. Like, I'm in a bad mood, bruh. You made me angry. I'm angry at you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> this is, this is really. something that before marriage, I didn't know how to deal with. Yeah. And so bringing it all the way personal from, like, super spiritual, um, I didn't know how to express the uncomfortable emotions, right? Mm. Because I hadn't learned it and had a sense of danger attached to what would happen if I ever expressed mm. my anger or sadness or pain outwardly. And so the yeah. way it showed up for me was, like, being passive-aggressive, giving the silent treatment, um, rolling my eyes or sniping and it took a lot of work and practice to understand i can say that he's not mm. necessarily going to do anything with it he's not going to fix my feelings <laughs> like mm -hmm. that's not his job but i can acknowledge it and we can coexist in a way where there's still health and there's still um my walk and who i am with god his walk and who he is with god and our marriage is intact instead of the flesh like taking over and running mm -hmm. everything, and then you've given space for the enemy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because that need you mentioned, it isn't just the lust or just the spending. There's a need. There's yes. an, I was left alone to deal with this when I was four. And mm -hmm. now I feel like if I satisfy this void in this way, mm -hmm. then I'm, I'm taking ground back. And those are the, the little openings that the enemy just mm -hmm. crawls into. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's within our control to give that to Christ and to let him um, minister to us in a way where our marriage remains whole. Yeah. Mm. That's so helpful. God, that was rich. Oh, yeah. Your All sin is being met by illegitimate. Yeah, it's a it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a, a legitimate a legitimate need yeah. being met illegitimately. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness! Mm -hmm. yeah. I think it was in the search for significance so the first place I saw that. It was that, incredible. That, book. And that sounds like work that you would do even now, wherever you're at on the mm -hmm. journey, is like figure out. Okay, if I have this expression of sin in my life, mm -hmm. and this expression of sin is usually because I'm lonely or usually because whatever. Some people just look at the symptom of sin, mm -hmm. but they don't actually trace it back to the root of what yeah. caused you to right. fall into that. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that you can do prior to marriage. Like, you know, if you are falling into sexual sin, where did that start? Yeah. Where did that begin? Who, where are you? Who, who said that to you? It, it kind of reminds yeah. me of like Adam in the garden. Like, yeah. like who told who you, told you, you that? Told you that? <clears throat> who mm -hmm. told you you were naked? Mm -hmm. And so we almost have to do the work of going back in because the truth is, even what I hear you guys saying, the work doesn't just start before marriage. The work continues into the mm -hmm. marriage. But now, instead of just wrestling with God by yourself or wrestling with your problems by yourself, <laughs> you've got a partner in there. You've got, a, mm -hmm. you got somebody to, to be in there with you. But mm -hmm. you, like you said, learning your fighting style. Mm. 
<laughs> learn your fighting style prior to getting married. And for me, I'm like, wow, if, if we were to just do the work prior to marriage to learn how to fight and not just fight with our emotions, but learn how to fight in the spirit, learn how to do the work you need to do, learn how to pray. And as you're doing that work for yourself, be praying for that future spouse that God would teach them how to do the work in their lives mm-hmm. so that they can ultimately become who they need to be so that when you guys do come together, you both know how to fight. Mm-hmm. I know how to pray. You know how to pray. I know how to deal with my emotions. You know how to deal with your emotions. I know that if I get like this, I need to go see my therapist. If I, you know, whatever yeah. things you need to do prior to marriage, be praying for that person, but also be willing to do that work yourself because the work doesn't just start in marriage. The work starts prior to marriage and continues in marriage Mm -hmm. because you're going to be working. And I feel like that's what we've learned. You know, we're, we're vets now, you know, we're two years in. So, you know, we, we we really like, I got my boots up. I'm ready. Like we're, we're ready to to do what needs to be done in our marriage. But you know, you know, we're not pros. That's, that's, uh, we're still (laughs) figuring it out, man. Um, but there's nothing like, there is nothing like having a partner that knows how to go to war with you. Like, and not war with you, but knows how to go to war against the enemy that is trying to come against you in your life. Like, there is literally nothing like that. It is, it's so invaluable. And, but there's this, this, this other thing that I kind of want to mention because you also kind of said finding somebody that has a willingness to fight, you know, finding somebody, and like, that's something that I think that if you, if you, are not willing to do the work yourself you'll probably attract somebody who's also not willing to do the work Mm -hmm. and or either that or find somebody who likes to be the answer to another person's problem so then it kind of creates this codependency so there's (laughs) there's there (laughs) i touch things my goodness i touch something no but there's so there's levels to it there's definitely different levels of of healthy approach to how you want to work together to get through life and to solve problems Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I think both of us, if you could have seen my face. <laughs> that that part part of the answer to other people. Like, he was doing the same thing. Yeah. Both of us were just like, oh, my God. Because what is, what is unseen <laughs> is that we seek. Uh, um, so the Holy Spirit is a sword. It divides, mm-hmm. right? And in our lives, we don't. We seek people who will um, support and provide infrastructure for mm-hmm. whatever our habits mm-hmm. are. <laughs> mm-hmm. And if our mm-hmm. habits are poor behavior and unhealthy coping mechanisms, yeah. we will surround ourselves with a whole team mm-hmm. that all wow. talk crazy about their spouses, mm-hmm. drink too much, do X, Y, Z, whatever the things are. Or like you mentioned, ah, um, not being willing to be introspective and do the work and self-correct. Mm-hmm. And you'll find yourself around people who think the same way and you won't have the kind of healthy accountability yeah. that supports your change yeah. and growth. Yeah. And so you won't even realize it. Mm-hmm. You won't realize it because you're just seeking the same people that mirror it back to mm-hmm. you. So that's a big thing to be mindful of. Like if your circle is all okay with you, yeah. that doesn't always mean everything's okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just to jump in on that, because um, we were talking about things, myths that we want to debunk. I think in the dating scene, people don't realize it, but we're looking for clones. Mm. Wow. Oh, oh, yes. Wow. We just oh. want another version of us. Mm-hmm. And the wild part about that is, thank you, Holy Spirit. God, God is a God of multiplication, not replication. Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. God multiplies, but he does not make copies of the same thing over and over mm-hmm. and over. Mm-hmm. But when we date because we want that familiarity, which allows us to be comfortable with whatever dysfunction we have, yeah. we seek to replicate. And that's not God's design. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I'm bad at this. I want to stay bad at this. (laughs) I don't want to be accountable for it. Let me find somebody else that's bad at it too. Wow. And then Mm -hmm. we join with that person and they're worse at it than we are. Mm. And then we see it in them and judge them for the thing we're bad at too. Mm -hmm. Because we don't want to do the work on us. And it's a lot easier to try to do the work on somebody else. It is. That's crazy. And so now we are replicating instead of multiplying, which is this is something I'm bad at. Chances are God has a person who is good at it. Mm. 
and has my best interests in their heart. Yeah. And now mm -hmm. I join with this person, mm -hmm. and yes, it's uncomfortable because they are good at something I'm bad at. Mm -hmm. They are exposing a weakness, but they're not exposing it to hurt me. Yeah. They're exposing it to help me. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. They're exposing it so that I can then give it to God. And now between me, my spouse, and God, we have strategies to turn that weakness into a strength, and that's multiplication. Mm. Yeah. If people would date with that mind and spirit, it would be a lot easier to get to this place of, this is the person for me. Because everybody assumes I'm a Yankee fan. I need another Yankee fan. Mm. Otherwise, my life is not complete. And if you're not, it means you're not the one for me. Mm. Fam, mm. the perfect one for you might be a Red Sox fan. Yeah. <laughs> or might not even be into baseball. Might not yeah. even like baseball. Teams, football person. <laughs> I love baseball. Can you imagine me being like, my wife got to love baseball. Yeah. Where's Nick and Mary here? She doesn't like baseball, but... I'll she watch. sure did take me. To, she will watch. <laughs> She'll take me. She took me to a game. Aww, That's what I'm talking see? about. She <laughs> is willing That's to share. But this yeah. is that, uh -huh. and that willingness means now when she wants to watch whatever she wants to watch, mm -hmm. I'm willing to take to, to check that out too. Yeah, this a is return on the investment. <laughs> yes, yes, reciprocity. <laughs> reciprocity. reciprocity. This is this is what I'm talking. This is yeah. compound interest. Yes. There we now go. we got see, Now we're talking business. <laughs> It is business sometimes. It yes. is business sometimes. I'm still stuck on that we look for people that will, essentially what I heard you say is, is, is a lot of us are looking for people to affirm our brokenness yeah. because we're comfortable in it. Yeah. We're comfortable staying the way we are. We're comfortable yeah. with the patterns and the habits and the situations. But the right person, when you find them, should confront those things. Yeah. Not confronting them from a place of condemnation, right. but almost to partner with the Holy Spirit and bring in conviction. Mm -hmm. And it should yes. lead you to want to change because that's all the conviction is. It's, it's a desire within you to want to change, to want to turn, to want to, to shift the way that you do things because there's a healthier, better, more productive version of you on the other side of that change. Yeah. Yeah. But if we get with people or we seek out people that are gonna just affirm our brokenness, we're gonna stay broken and yeah. become even more broken mm -hmm. because now to your point, multiplication works both ways. Now I'm multiplying that brokenness. Mm. That's really, that's really oh, interesting Jesus. to think about. So good. <laughs> I love that you um, introduced conviction because as <clears throat> you were speaking, and my, my heart was kind of going out to the people that are like, dang, so I'm in a world of hurt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody I know is just yeah. mirroring this back to me. <laughs> this is a mess. And how <laughs> is how it going to change? Yeah. And you kind of, I love that the Holy Spirit just used you to voice the change, which is conviction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so when we're in those spaces, because for me, it was drinking. I was a heavy drinker and I finally stopped, I think three years into our marriage. And before that, my whole social circle was heavy, heavy drinkers. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize it because I wasn't convicted about it. Mm -hmm. And so I think the, the piece to look for is like, who in, how do I respond to conviction? And mm. am I getting convicted by yeah. anybody in my social circle? Ooh. If the only time you feel conviction is when you're going to church on Sunday or when you're mm. watching a live stream, like there's a missing element yes. in your life. Yes. And you're being, <laughs> we saw a quote that we're holding on to where someone, uh, I'm not going to name the show because some people, it, <laughs> it's, they, they need to not, but the show, what the quote was. <laughs> they're going to they be in the comments like, I know exactly I know exactly what's going on. That is. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> Pastor Tina and Pastor Ed needs to be watching the show. Watch that. <laughs> when we want freedom to do whatever we want without any responsibility, mm. <laughs> with no accountability, right? the only people on the planet that are afforded that are babies because <laughs> wow. they're developmentally <laughs> yeah. incapable yeah. of handling responsibility. Yeah. They can do whatever they want. Yeah. <laughs> and so this idea that your friend circle should be convicting you and mm. asking yourself, because I remember being in a space where I couldn't handle conviction or mm. correction. Mm -hmm. I would get mad, I would get judgmental, and the, the relationship would probably end. I would cut people off. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And so there was no accountability. And so being mindful of that, like, where am I getting convicted? Am I actually exploring that and taking that to Christ? Is my circle providing that for me? And if it's not, how can you introduce it? Sometimes yeah. you've got to yeah. get around people who aren't exactly like you, whose yeah. habits and lifestyles aren't exactly like yours, and welcome that change if it's healthy. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And you got to start that practice early because once you get into a marriage, 
there is one person. They mm -hmm. see you every day. They every see day. All your everything. All of it. It's mm -hmm. on microscopic, it like telescopic black. They can see it. And they've seen it over a span of days, months, and years. Mm -hmm. So they're not just pointing out one thing. By the ooh, help me. By the time your spouse points it out, that's not the first time. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh God. No. They've if seen I say it. it Season in, Say it. season out. Say it. They've seen it in the fall, the spring, the winter. Mm -hmm. They've seen it by the time your spouse points something out, like because you've dated, so they yeah. saw it when you were dating. Wow. They saw it the day you got married. Oh my god. They they've seen it, and by the time it's like, okay, I need to speak to this. Mm -hmm. Yo, this ain't new. Mm -hmm. And now this is a a conversation to what you're saying out where conviction has to be introduced. But if every relationship you've had up until that point has had no conviction at all, this feels like condemnation. Mm -hmm. Or an attack. Yeah. It feels mm -hmm. like an attack. And then you got to remind That's yourself, true. wait a minute, we are on the same side. Yeah. M my spouse is for me, more for me than anyone else other than Jesus. And now, but you have to do that then instead of knowing that in advance and then being putting your, sp your spirit in a position to receive conviction mm. and then grow and change and move from there. So mm. it really does start well before then. Mm. Like, check mm. your friend circle, check your family. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, it, 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 if your family has been trying to tell you, hey, son, the way you, you make money decisions that lead to no money. <laughs> You're always borrowing <laughs> from me. This is, yo, know, your mama says it, your auntie says it, your cousin says it, your brother says it, everybody says it. I mean, if you check your records, the IRS says it too. Mm. But then you bring this into your marriage and now your husband or your wife says it. Okay, now it's, it's time to actually take that thing and do something about it because there's more at stake. Mm -hmm. Once you're in covenant, there's more at stake than when you were by yeah. yourself. Yeah. This thing is this thing could interrupt the progress of our covenant. We're not even gonna get into the babies. Mm -hmm. We're not even gonna get into the next generation mm -hmm. where something that you could have stopped in this generation mm -hmm. is now being perpetuated and has become something that's a generational mm -hmm. yeah. stronghold. Yeah. So, oh man. 100% necessary, but you don't have to get married to, to be convicted. Yeah, you can start no. with your real close relationships now and listen to what people say, which aren't just the compliments, but are the constructive notes yeah. that we need to take. For sure. Because yeah. you, can't, you can't grow or change if you don't confront the things that you have in your life that keep you a certain way. Because right. you know, chances are you know and you've just settled with it and you've made the excuse, this is just how I am. This is just the way I've always done things. This is just me. <laughs> and you continue to live out a toxic cycle because you've written it off as like, well, this is just me. And now you've done something even worse. You've made it your identity. Mm -hmm. And so our identity, who we are, and this is for the believer, you have to submit yourself to the Holy Spirit because it's a really scary road to walk down when you start to lose conviction about things or when you have so, no conviction about so things scary. that are clearly sin. Yeah. Like, that means that you haven't submitted it to the Holy Spirit because the Holy yeah. Spirit is not going to allow that to continue to live in your life. It's going to yeah. convict you and it's going to be so evident, so clear that like I need to make a change or that thing's going to eat you alive. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing for you to have conviction, but a lot of us don't have the relationship with conviction that we need because it does feel like condemnation mm -hmm. or it does feel like this is shame. You need to change this. How dare you? Mm -hmm. But if we were to change the way we think and the way we see things to conviction is actually helping me to change the way I move, to change the way I think, we would probably be the healthier, uh, we would be much healthier than we are. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and it's a continual journey with that conviction. Um, it's a really good spot to, to think about like, you know, um, I'm curious for you guys, and I want to just ask you this question because I'm, seeing how this is going to go, but, um, we hear when it comes to, I'm, think, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about, I'm, I'm thinking about the single person. We're all watching it unfold in real time. Right, which one is Ties it? Which one about was rain, <laughs> Oof. So how do you, or how did you balance feeling sufficient, feeling oh, okay, okay prior to getting married and then also still remain being open to marriage? Mm -hmm. Ooh, can I start? <laughs> One of the things we've always joked about is how when we met, we were incredibly 
happy alone. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like pro- ridiculously okay with being by ourselves. And still I think are. that still are <laughs> to this day. Like, don't get it twisted. Man, time by yourself in your marriage, so healthy. Yeah. That's a mm-hmm. that's a myth we'll debunk right then and there. Mm-hmm. Just because you're married does not mean the time and space you take to yourself is suddenly a bad thing and you're robbing your marriage. Quite the opposite. You're feeding your marriage mm-hmm. with any single intentional space of time that you can take to yourself because God give, needs to give you a download for the next interaction you need to have with your spouse. So mm-hmm. time alone, yeah. wonderful. End of rant moving forward. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great rant. <laughs> it's so true. But when we met, it was not, it's to, to, to this day, it's nothing for me to go to the movies by myself. Mm. And I am content, <laughs> thrilled. Me, my little bag of caramel peanuts, yeah. mm. and my little slushy, completely unhealthy. It's like 1,500 calories. Okay, <laughs> I'm good. I can, go to the, I can go to the beach and sit by myself and listen to the wind mm-hmm. and the waves and the Lord. And I don't feel like I am missing out on the company of because I'm in the company of. Mm. Yes. Yeah. When you can learn that early, oh my goodness, it, it, it means then you're bringing your full attention to every interaction we have. Mm-hmm. Because I'm not feeling like you need to fill my loneliness. Because yeah. I've had my time with me and I've had my time with God and I enjoy who I am, faults and all. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not, having faults does not mean we are not worthy of the presence of God mm-hmm. and the, the blessing that is solitude for God to speak to us. Mm. Just means it's time to share those weaknesses with him mm-hmm. and to reflect on them. But yeah, I would say that's a huge one. Be all right with spending time with yourself. That's so good. And, and not mistaking being set apart for being lonely. Mm. <laughs> oh my gosh every time he does this <laughs> so I'm on the opposite end of the spectrum and I'm totally weepy which is my go-to yes, you are. <laughs> but um, when you were describing how say again what what you said about your flaws and being able to be in the presence of the Lord if you can remember I can try um, our flaws don't make us less worthy of the presence of God and of solitude with him Mm -hmm. and of learning about ourselves with him. A lot of us, we have our flaws and it's like, I don't want to deal with them. And because I don't want to deal with my flaws or my flaws, whatever they are, whatever sin that is that I'm in, I've allowed the lie to get into my mind and say, Mm. well, that means I'm not worthy of time by myself. Mm. Wow. Because if I get by myself and then I hear from God, I don't know if we're going to be able to work this thing out Mm. together. Mm. So I won't even approach him with it. So now I have to fill my time with God with time with other people Mm. who who not only will not convict me of it, they'll enhance it. They'll get me distracted enough so that me not thinking about it is is what I think is filling me. Mm -hmm. When it's actually killing me. (laughs) So it becomes time by myself. To really be like, yes, I am, I am suffering from this particular, I have a problem with drinking, I have a problem with lust, I have a problem with addiction. These are real problems, but that does not mean that I'm not worthy of time in solitude with God. I can trust myself alone with myself. Mm. Mm. Wow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. Mm. It's so good. Um, because I was on the opposite end of the spectrum. I was perfect, okay? <laughs> Without flaw, <laughs> okay? Um, no, I was both very comfortable being alone with myself. That was good. And I, and I realized in hindsight, some of that was a coping mechanism because growing up, I was safer alone <laughs> than around the people mm-hmm. that I was growing up around. And not physically, but emotional safety is important. Yeah. And so I was very content to be alone. Still am. Love my Tina time. And that's what I called it, actually. I remember Tina time. Yeah. Tina time. Full on dates like with myself. Yes. It was amazing. But what I was doing, you were, your question was around like feeling sufficient yeah. Yeah. when I was single. And I absolutely felt like I was... I had um, been striving toward and attained becoming the icon of a perfect wife and mother. <laughs> In my mind, I was like, I'm fit. 
I'm stylish, yeah. I've got the house, and it's orderly, and I know how to cook and mm -hmm. clean. And, it. like, you name all of the things mm. that are the stereotypical mm -hmm. icon of a... Um, a catch, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. What's ironic is the one thing that mattered I didn't have at the time. Wow. And that was Christ. Whoa. Mm. Like, literally, I thought I was good. I was pleasant. I was kind. He'll tell you I was a kinder person than some believers he knew. Walking in the fruit mm. of the Spirit and the joy of the Lord and did not believe in God at all. And this was like 20, 2009 to 2010. And you guys know the story of like, we started dating and the Holy Spirit was like, come here, girl, because this ain't it. <laughs> so he was kind of luring me in. And what I didn't realize was that conviction for me would kind of grow as this He like the Holy Spirit literally grew inside of me and was like, this stuff is not enough yeah. and I need you to focus on me and the more sober I became the more I laid aside things because substances that you consume don't just numb you also distractions numb you mm -hmm. um, watching certain kinds of television and music and mm -hmm. busying yourself it all numbs you to that solitude the way that God speaks to you and the conviction he'll give you that allows you to grow and change and so my journey with that started after we started dating and then it slowly grew to the point where oh gosh I think in 2017 I was finally able to fully be like okay God I trust you Mm. I fully trust you. And that was when I, for me, my biggest numbing agent was alcohol. And I wasn't in a space of being able to um, bring my feelings to him. And I was still in the space of getting so overwhelmed. He dealt with the blowback. And my kids were going to grow up and deal with the blowback. And so I was brought into this place of full humanity. Like I had been running from my humanity. Mm. And if I can just be this old Stepford wife <laughs> and just <laughs> drink away anything that seems problematic, mm. then I'll be all right. And he was able to bring me into the fullness of who he's created us to be because we need him in that. Yeah. And so that messy place, so that hot mess of a place is where I am now. <laughs> mm. <laughs> and that's sufficient. Yeah. yeah. Right? Because I don't have to be perfect to be qualified for Christ and we don't have to be perfect to be marriage material. We just have to be aware enough <laughs> to be like, ooh, that's conviction. What am I going to do with that? Mm. Oh, God, I need to surrender this to you. I need to be obedient in this area. So, so no, I, it, was, it was a challenge and it's a, a journey. That's so helpful. <laughs> that's well. It's helpful because I'll speak for myself and others because many others have expressed this. I need to have this before I get married. I need to have this. I need to have this. I need to have this. If I have this, then I'll be ready. Then you're ready. But you said, I had all that. I had the house. I had probably the finances. I had everything that would, would make me an ideal candidate for marriage. But you said you lacked one thing, and that one thing that you lacked was Christ. But mm -hmm. Christ is so much more than one thing. With Christ, you get everything. And so you thought you had everything, but you were actually missing everything. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times before we get married, we're thinking like, well, I need to have this, 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 and this. But if you truly focus on Christ, if you truly focus on the fact that I need a real relationship with Christ, he can make up the difference. It's like the Matthew 6, thing. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added. There was a season in my life prior to us getting married where I wish I had more money. I wish I had more X, Y, and Z. You, I can name a whole list of things that I wish I had prior to us getting married. And I would compare myself to others, even like down to like uh, Ren's father, who's obviously PT. I mean, he's got so many wonderful things that he's been able to provide for Ren and the whole family and the kids. And in the beginning, like one of the first things he told me when he sat me down was like, don't try to cover Ren the way I cover Ren. Mm. Mm -hmm. You need to cover her the way you cover her. Brilliant. And, and, and it broke off this thing of like, well, obviously, like he's way down the street compared to where I am. And I'm also, he's also 25 years older than I am. Um, but, but I still had the temptation to compare myself like, well, I need to, you know, have, you know, more money so that I, like, if we need anything, we can, I need to have this, this, and this. But all of that, although there's a degree of, yes, you know, you, you do want to make more, you do want to have more. The one thing that I needed to really focus on was becoming more of who God created me to be, learning how I can cover Ren for the way she needs to be covered in what we feel like is God leading us to marriage. Um, and that just helped me so much, even you just saying that. Like, I feel like that, that helps somebody out who's listening is like, 
I thought I was supposed to have this. I thought I was supposed to have that. <clears throat> but you don't necessarily need that. What you need is Christ and he'll be, he'll be sufficient for you. His grace will be sufficient for you. Yeah. Um, I love bringing it back <laughs> the thinking. Um, I love <laughs> Um I just love that this conversation is going back to Jesus as the center. Um, as you were talking, Pastor Ebb, um, what I was seeing in my spirit, and it's going to be pun intended, was the willingness to be seen. And I think that, I don't even know if this answers the question, um, but I think that when you, I know for me, when I was right before I met Ty, I was experiencing the most that I had ever felt seen in my life by God and also by myself. And I feel like that had to happen because if I wasn't going to allow myself to be seen by God and all of the imperfections, cause you know, like I, you know, we'd be a mess sometimes. Like I, I, I would be a mess. Absolute I'd be like, mess. God, like, I think I'm crazy. I think I am wiling right now. I am so lonely. And sometimes I feel like, like, like a crazy person, you know what I mean? Like, and, mm -hmm. but like I was giving him every, like I wasn't holding anything back at the time. I was like, God, I got this. I got this. Like, I, but I think that it was allowing myself to fully be seen by God so that he could really, he could really be my advocate. You know what I mean? Like he could really be like, no, I'm in every single, I'm in every single amount of this brokenness with you. There's nothing that you need to withhold from me. Like there's things that I was bringing up to him that happened in my youth. Um, just, just so many things that I was allowing him to uncover and finally, you know, got to this place where I was really, really comfortable, like feeling seen by God, feeling seen by myself and allowing myself to live in just this, this, this realm of freedom that I had not experienced before. And yeah, I was going out on dates and, you know, I was doing my, I'm a, I'm a big kid at heart. So like just doing my, my childlike, like, I just love, you know. I like go in amusement parks and getting on roller coasters and like just doing the things that felt like Ren. And then, you know, he comes along maybe nine months to a year later, but I knew how to be seen. And, and when you get into marriage, like you have to have this willingness to be like seen because like, <laughs> like you said, all caps I just saw because <laughs> like you said, there's like no space to really like, hide yourself and if there is that's a disservice to your to your spouse because eventually it's going to come out anyway mm -hmm. so having this willingness to be seen and allowing you to feel like you could be seen by me fully you know and, and in the beginning you know I don't you know you I had to you know a little bit like be like you know baby like how are you really feeling like what's going on mm. but I feel like I had walked with God for such a long time that he was like you can't hide anything. And I don't want you to feel like you have to hide anything. And especially when I bring this amazing man that I'm about to bring into your life, I don't want you to feel like you have to hide any bits of yourself. Because you married Ren Taylor Roberts. I now Hedley. I'm talking about. Right. You didn't marry anybody I know else. I got into. Yeah, and I know what I got. Hey, I love that. I got into. Um, Save that for later. Yeah, that's later. so real, though. Oh, man, so many things. Because even now... Oh, and it hurts to see this. You know, there there are marriages. These are marriages that have been, you know, going on for decades. And the two people have not fully seen themselves. Mm. And that just, man, that hurts me to my core. But just so 100 in terms of what you're saying, in in terms of preparing for marriages, what is, what is your relationship with God? Because... If you can't be fully vulnerable with God, you will not be fully vulnerable with your spouse. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's, it's like a training ground. Mm -hmm. It just, it gets you in the mode. And then to what you said, that's when God says, oh, she's going to withhold nothing from me. Mm -hmm. I can't withhold from you now. Mm -hmm. Now I can wow. bring you this person who you are to do this designed covenant with. Mm -hmm. Because I know you two won't hold out on each other. Because mm -hmm. yeah. if you have a... And marriage, it all has to be on display. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All of it. You can't afford to have anything hidden because the enemy can take the thing that's in the dark mm -hmm. and have its little way with it. And now you're fighting something and your spouse is fighting something that they weren't prepared for. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, oh, that, that, that transparency mm -hmm. is so great. 
Oh, what you were saying reminded me of the rich young ruler and how he had his list and he checked off all of his boxes and he had everything. And he said, I've done this, I've done this, I've done this, I've done everything you told me to do. What do I need? I feel like a lot of people there, what do I need to do to get married? What do I need to do to find my boo? What do I need to do to find that person? And then God says, first off, everything that's on your list, not as important as you think. Mm -hmm. Number two, follow me. Mm -hmm. And people struggle with either the first one or the second one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the part that hurts so much about the rich young ruler, it says he walked away sad. And I always read it and realized he walked away sad, but he also was still rich. Hmm. But he was sad. All, he still had all the things, yeah. but now he was sad with them yeah. because he knew that there was better. And he said, no, he didn't know yeah. in his heart that he knew in his heart that he couldn't give up those things, that those things had him. Mm -hmm. And for people who are really looking to prepare themselves, quote unquote, for marriage, whatever you think in your mind you need and your list is checked off or whatever you've seen in your parents or your grandparents or your favorite five couples on TV, all those things that you think you've accomplished and seen on Netflix mm -hmm. and you've done them, number one, God is gonna show up and say, is that list more important than me? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. if you stick to the list more than you stick to the voice of God, this thing is going to crumble. Wow. Mm -hmm. And wow. if you're willing to get rid of the list, that's cool. But then that means follow me yeah. mm -hmm. in your marriage. Yeah. And if we're not following him before, it gets even tougher to follow him after because now you have this figure called the spouse who's everything you've wanted, everything you've desired. And instead of being a... Uh, uh, covenant that enriches now it becomes almost like a distraction from god mm. Mm. yeah 100 percent. and so it's like whoa make sure you are willing whatever this list because there's this magical list for everybody i had it too ty i felt you oh yeah <laughs> one million percent yeah yo i gotta have uh i gotta i gotta own some land i gotta make sure I, my, my 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 credit is this and I'm working this amount of hours, but I'm able to travel, so I need to make sure my time <laughs> yeah. is flexible. Oh, yeah. Like I had so oh, many wonderful list. like Gorgeous. ideas of what I thought being ready to be a husband was. And then God was like, just follow me. Mm -hmm. mm. All that other stuff may or may not be there, just follow me. And it was so hard for me. And I'm sorry, I probably made it harder on you, babe, because I struggled with knowing my list was not complete. Mm. Mm. Even in mm -hmm. even the first few years of our marriage, I spent a good deal of it beating myself up mm -hmm. for this imaginary list that I didn't feel was complete. Feel you a thousand percent in terms yeah. of comparison, like you're looking around and I'm like, he's not even married, yo. Yeah. <laughs> he's got da -da 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 my personal favorite. He's not even following the Lord, yo. And he's got da -da -da -da. and I'm married, I'm in covenant, I'm serving, I'm there Sundays and all this other Ooh. stuff. And they have all they have the list. Yeah. But I have the covenant. Wow. Mm. Wow. And it was years before I finally under, I had to do that paradigm shift of if I have the covenant and I have the relationship with God, I am prepared. Yeah. And I have what I need. So that is one I will give to, to, the, to the single folks. I'm going to look right at you, single folks. Get that relationship with God mm -hmm. first. Mm. Mm. I was going to end with the question. Prior to getting married, what is a critical piece of advice that you would share with somebody who desires to get married? But I think you answered I want us all to still answer it. Oh, yeah. But, but yeah, I think to be honest with you, for me, I had to get to the place. And this is this is for the person who wants to do it God's way, the person who wants to truly have the fullness of what marriage can be, which is God's design. Um, it, it is the thing that Christ compares to even himself, like his relationship with the church. Husbands love your wife as Christ loves the church. We are to reflect the kingdom quite literally through our marriage. And so if you want the fullness of it, you do have to get to that place where you're willing to give up everything. And even that, love your wife as Christ loved the church. How did he love the church? By giving up his life. But another caveat with Christ is he said, if you give up your life for his sake, you'll actually find your life. So what if we're convinced that we found our life, we found all these things, we've checked off all these boxes, but in reality, the one thing that you lack, which is what he said to the young ruler, the one thing that you lack is this, give up everything that you have, sell it, give it to the poor, and follow me to your point. What if that's what God's waiting for? What if your spouse is held up because you haven't fully given up everything to follow him? 
And you think if you're going to give it up, but, but what did he say? He said, if you lose your life for my sake, you actually find your life. Mm -hmm. So be willing to give it up because if you yeah. give it up, you're actually going to find your life. You're actually going to find the fullness of life. You're actually going to find the meaning of life. And then that is the thing that carries you through the marriage because now you're going to dance with the three of you. And this will be the last thing I say. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never hear from me again after this. One this of the most blessing. beautiful pieces of advice we ever got prior to getting married was actually something you guys shared with us. It was an illustration. And I don't know if you guys came up with this or if somebody else told you guys this or where it came from, but it was beautiful. You said that marriage is like a triangle. And oh, in yeah. this triangle... You should see Christ at the top and you at the bottom. And so the closer that you get to Christ as you're journeying up the pyramid, the closer you get to each other. And so as you're following Christ, look at this, you're following Christ up the mountain, up the pyramid, up the triangle, you're getting closer to him, but you're also getting closer to each other. And so in moments where we feel disconnected, in moments where we have felt like we need to you know, straighten things out. The first thing that we do is we say, we got to get close to Christ. We got to get in our prayer closet. We got to isolate from the situation, from the circumstance, and we got to draw near to him so we can come back with solutions. And then that has been one of the things, to be honest, which it can happen now as you're preparing, get close to him. The closer you get to Jesus, if that person is getting closer to him, you guys are going to end up meeting in the middle. And that's what happened in our lives is like both of us were pursuing God. We both got to the place where we're like, we're going to give up everything and follow you. And we're doing this. And then, boom, we met in the middle as we were getting closer to Christ. And so it's, it's a continuation of journeying from the bottom of this pyramid to get closer to Christ. And the closer you get to him, the closer you get to your spouse. Mm. That, that, that thing I love we'll it. We'll preach. You can put it Experts. in the book. That's you should why make an illustration. Uh, you should sell it. Okay, you should sell it. My vows, literally, my vows included. This was wisdom from the I Lord. I still remember your vows. I was like, this I'm going to mess up big. <laughs> <laughs> she sure did. She put that thing fact. on I'm blast. An expert mistake it. maker. Is all. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. No. Oh my God, that's amazing. Level set. I love it. Um, no. Um, I think that, you know, I, I would say that 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 list that we were talking about um, and what you need to be and how certain things are not important and other things are, I think one thing that is extremely important um, goes back to your level of surrender and obedience to Christ Jesus. And I'll explain why. Um, the reason being is that you have to be malleable, even to the point where you are, you, when, you're, when you're praying that prayer, like, you know, God, I want your will, what is it, you know, I'm laying this down, even lay down the idea of marriage. I got to a point where I was like, you know what, God, I would love to be married, but give me vision that doesn't stifle me from loving you if I, you know, if I need my vision to change to like, me living single, you know, living a single life. What would that look like? Like, I w you have to be, like, malleable, and you have to be able to be like, okay, you know, God, I, I know I want this because that's what you have to be in marriage. I know I want this, but also I'm open to the possibility that it could not be this. So when you find that level of surrender as an individual, you'll be able to bring that level of surrender into your marriage. Cause as women, as ladies, so you talked about, you know, what, you know, men, husbands love your wives as Christ loves the church. And then it says, wives submit to your husbands. <laughs> so I can't think of a better pairing submit and surrender, mm. but you're able to surrender because you trust that person. You're able to surrender because you know that that person is willing to lay their lives down for you. So submit and surrender go hand in hand. And as a husband, your role is to lay your life down. And then our job is to submit. And so, but you can't submit unless you trust the person that you're submitting to. Mm -hmm. So there's a synergy between what you're doing because I can see that love is there. Mm -hmm. And then what I'm doing is I'm submitting because I can trust that love. So, yeah, it all goes, it really, really all goes back to that relationship with, with him. Mm -hmm. Like if you, if you, if you nail and master that, being able to surrender, being able to be malleable, being able to be flexible, mm -hmm. I really feel like that makes the relationship that much more rewarding and fruitful. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the one piece of advice I would give before someone gets married or while they're single, 
Is yeah. this okay? Um, is to to really work on. This is going to sound funny to hear, but to work on becoming fully human. Mm. Like mm-hmm. I'm a mom now. And our daughter is everything to me because she Sweetie. was born Sweetie. fully Sweetie. human. Sweetie. And what I mean is all of the emotions, <laughs> all of the experiences Amen. she has been crystal clear about and fully formed <laughs> about from day one. I was never, it was clear when she was sad, mad, happy, all the mm-hmm. things. Mm-hmm. And what I didn't realize as a mom was that because of my own limited emotional expression, my son, who's older than her, didn't have a full range of emotional expression earlier on, which seemed easy. Mm. But really, it's this, like, how full is your humanity? How full mm. is the expression that you're bringing to God? Yeah. And so what we don't realize, what's important to bring to him is, like, everything that I'm experiencing. Mm. Jesus wept. He was in anguish. He had compassion. Mm. He experienced, he didn't come down as an automaton (laughs) and like magically conquer death without any concern or qualms. He experienced everything and the power of the Holy Spirit was in that reconciliation. And still, the nevertheless, the and I will be raised to overcome. And so for us, moving fully into our humanity before we get married, Mm. because what will happen is you bring, a lot of us tend to be, we don't realize how robotic we've become, how like we only lean into the preferential things Mm. and try to not just present our representative to who we date we present our representatives to us yeah right (laughs) because it's unpleasant (laughs) to feel like you've let yourself down and all of those things so really being able to explore and experience the full range of your humanity Mm -hmm. and get comfortable with that Mm -hmm. like how do i express that in a way that's safe and healthy how do i cope with that Mm -hmm. what do i turn to before getting married so that when you're coming in there's health there and there's it deepens your relationship with christ Mm -hmm. at the same time because you're not just presenting your representative to him Mm -hmm. lord i showed up to church and i'm praying and i just surrender all (laughs) <laughs> you know, my hope for my husband. And yeah. I, I want to, what should I offer? No, give me your, I don't trust you, God. You yes. let me down, God. Yes. I don't trust yes. myself. Like, bring everything totally. to him totally. um, is the most powerful thing I think you can do to yeah. set yourself so, up so um, for a healthy marriage. And really just to be a healthy person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And y'all took all the good ones. <laughs> what am I supposed you to say? You keep let into it. <laughs> oh, no. um, in addition to everything that was said, the one word that just popped into my mind was uh, one, take your time. Mm-hmm. Please, for the love of Jesus, <laughs> stop rushing into marriage. Mm-hmm. It's forever. Once the two of you get together, it is forever. Once you hit that button, Mm -hmm. there's no going back. Mm -hmm. So you might as well chill until it is time. Because once covenant is covenant, the the whole life shifts. Time accelerates in a way you're never prepared for until it happens. Take your time. Yeah. I would also say know your voids. Mm. Mm -hmm. Get to know your voids and identify them now so that you're not relying on your spouse to fill your voids. Mm. Mm -hmm. Because you know what they are. You know to what you're saying. You know what your weaknesses are. You know what you need to work on, and you're already practiced in taking them to God first. Mm -hmm. And if God gives instruction to your spouse to be a part of filling that void or some instruction from them, fine. But don't just tap your spouse and say, hey, you, fill me. Mm. Mm. You don't want to discover your voids in marriage. You want to have as much of an understanding of what they are before you get there. Take your time, know your voids, and come on, sirens. Come on, <laughs> come on through for your boy. We've had this is like we've, we've had probably. exactly <laughs> voids like every single sign that you can think of. Right, but you know what? <laughs> 
Short of the rooster throwing, gotcha. we've many, heard it many, all. Many, many <laughs> sirens, many, many sounds. Notifications are going off. And this is a notification from God to you. <laughs> These are things yes, that you can't, that you can't ignore. Um, I feel like there was a place you were going with that, and I don't know if... if you uh, still I could got, try to find it. Yeah. Listen, I think it was saying, uh, I said, one voids. In. And then I would say, I said, take your time. Know your voids. Yes. And whatever preconceived notion you have about marriage, be prepared to suspend it. Mm. Because the, the covenant that God has for you looks nothing like anything you've seen before. Yeah. yeah. So don't shoehorn it into what you're familiar with or comfortable with, but just accept that it's going to be different. I'm glad your parents were married for 65 years and they never fought. Newsflash, they fought. Oh, yeah. You just didn't see oh, God, it. You just did. ain't seen it. <laughs> they you might have learned how to be respectful if you had seen them fight. That part right there, too. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> but whatever you've seen about marriage, I'm sure there are things that can kind of help to give you a, a, an idea of it. Suspend your current knowledge of what you believe knowledge is, of what you believe marriage is and allow God to show you what your covenant and yeah. your marriage is going to be. Mm -hmm. Last thing I'll say is, as much as we have said, none of us have figured it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And newsflash, you never will. Nope. Yeah. Mm. There's no such thing as having figured it out. There is, there's a door for a season and you figured out what key you needed for that door. If it's communication, that's the door you need to open so that your marriage can grow. If it's listening, if it's prayer, if it's intercession, there's different keys for every single dimension. Mm -hmm. You're always gonna have a door to open because you're always gonna have somewhere to go because this is a forever thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're never gonna have it all figured out. You're never gonna have it all figured out, but be willing to grow and adapt and learn and if you're with the right person, with conviction, uh, with the Holy Spirit, they're, they're going along with the two of you are going up the mountain together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm done. No, that's, <laughs> there, there's too many mic drops in this entire episode. <laughs> but, but I want to do something because I noticed myself doing it and I felt like, I was like, why do I keep locking my hands together? And, and as I was doing it, there's something I feel like before, to your point, before you lock hands with that person, you have to open your hands up to God. Yes, Lord. And so whichever one of the two of you, I'm putting you on the spot, feels led to pray for somebody who feels like, man, I just want to surrender it. I want to surrender whether it's the desire to get married so that I can walk with what God needs me to do in this season or just really all of it. I want to surrender my life to God, whatever that case is. I want us to pray, uh, one of you to pray for that person because I think that's a great place. If you want to start today to prepare for marriage, the first place is surrender. Absolutely. Cool. Mm -hmm. Woo. Heavenly Father, what an encounter today was. Lord, right now we are interceding on the half of that one. We believe there's more than one, but we're going to get at least one today yes, Lord. whose issue has been surrender. Lord, whatever that thing is, that this particular person is holding on to, I pray that they have a fresh revelation that you are greater than it, that you will love them in spite of it. And as they release and surrender this to you, you will reveal the incredible love, mercy, grace, patience, all the fruits of the spirit. May they all be on full display for this person in a supernatural and, yes, Lord, in a natural and tangible way yes. that allows that surrender, that one thing, whatever it is, that one thing that they have kept in the dark, that allows that thing to be brought to the light and for them to know that it will indeed be worth it. Father, we're going beyond seeking a spouse. We're seeking you. Lord, we're going beyond seeking a, a, a partner for life. We are seeking the cover that is who you are. Mm -hmm. So Lord, we are pulling the curtain. We are opening the closet door. We are shining light under the bed. Every dark space where there has been something hidden that has kept us from fully surrendering to a life with you. 
this moment, right now, Lord God, announce yourself in such a way to this person so that the, 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 lot, the reasonable choice, the reasonable act, the reasonable sacrifice is indeed this surrender. Yes. I pray, Lord, that there is not a single area of our lives that is off limits to mm. you, mm. off limits to your love, off limits to your touch, off limits to your forgiveness, off limits to your mercy, that is off limits to your affection towards us. Yes. And Father, may we all be affirmed that because you put the breath of life in us, we are worthy to receive the fruit of submission, the fruit of surrender, that is a relationship with you and ultimately a relationship with whomever you decide we should be in covenant with. Mm -hmm. Father, I thank you right now for the testimonies of what was given up. Ooh, yeah. Glory yes, be to Lord. God. So Addictions that were given up, strongholds that were broken, uh, frames of mind that have been reshaped and, re and, and shifted, Father God, that one, someone who has been conforming themselves to the image of this world is now breaking that cycle of conforming to the world over and over with the renewing of the mind that is taking place right now. I thank you, Lord, that you have freed some people today. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that liberty was indeed brought to captives yes. and that these newly free mm -hmm. can roam and be free indeed. Who the sun sets free is free indeed. Mm -hmm. That those who are now free can roam this earth knowing who they are and whose they are. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, Jesus, Jesus. amen. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Family, if you are interested in more conversations about marriage, this is not where it stops. The marital arts is actually available to you right now. You can go and check out more from Pastor Tina, Pastor Ebenezer, down below, find their channel, look at all the resources. They are having conversations after conversation after conversation. And they talk about things that I didn't even know I needed. And I'm married two years and I'm ready to be listening for the next 20 years because I believe that this podcast that you guys started uh, truthfully will be such an incredible resource, not just for you and the people now, but for generations to come that people will look back at. And I truly believe, I've told you this privately, but I'll say it here on the podcast, even prophetically, that 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 podcast, you guys stepping into this in faith, is the thing that's going to open up so many doors that you guys have been wondering and waiting for and thinking about and praying about and pondering, God, when is it going to be our time for this? Or God, what are you going to do? The things that you've given us dreams and visions about. But I believe that this podcast, The Marital Arts, is a key to unlock those things. So uh, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for being an example and a model for us um, and for so many others. And uh, we are selfishly going to say thank you for being some of our mentors yes. and accountability partners. <laughs> um, and we just are so grateful for you guys. Love you so mm -hmm. much. And thank you all for tuning in to this episode of the Generation One Podcast. Catch you soon. Peace.